And I'm sure there's voices in your head sometimes when your friend's saying something, you're, what does that voice tell you? Slap him in the face. Yeah, trust Slap him right now, on that right cheek. Leave a mark, right now. But what do you say to that voice? What happens? You, you can tell me what you're told, but you can't tell me facts. Okay. So what's, so get, get, let's, let's get to the point then. What evidence are you looking for? What's the thing that's still umming and erring you? I guess it's like, how should I put it? It's the real concept of, I guess, heaven and hell. It's the thing of, is that even real? Or when I die, is it not just black? Why not just turn to dust? Why not just turn So what to happens after death? Essentially, yeah. That? Yeah. Do you believe that there's a God and the God is Allah? I believe that there is a God for sure. The fact that it's Allah, not yet. If that makes sense, but I do believe there's a God and I do fear it. Maybe. Okay. Do you believe that the Quran is the most preserved and is the most yeah, complete sure. of all the books? And if the Quran is saying that the identity of God is Allah, mm. does it make sense? Yeah, for sure. The validity of the Prophet, peace be upon him, makes sense? Yeah. So then what's in the Quran? Makes perfect sense. It's true. So if the Quran is saying that after you die, there is a judgment, mm -hmm. you accept that as well yeah. then, isn't it? Mm. Do you see? Your question has been answered. Yeah, but it's still not definitive if that makes brother, sense. Brother, okay. Brother, that's like being slapped in the face with a pie and you're wondering whether the pie exists or not. It's true. You've gotten <laughs> everything that you need. But, but, but yeah. it's not definitive. You've gotten everything you, you need and it is definitive. It's not. It's not. Okay, we, we can discuss that. So, so, Tim, what about for you? Where's your journey at the moment? Where's your journey with Islam at the moment? Where are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's stopping you from accepting Islam, Tim? I feel like it's the same. I feel like it's the same. I feel like we're in the same boat, essentially. Do you believe the same thing as him? Or do you believe something different? Because you're a different person with different experience. Like, do you still require evidence? Or do you think I have enough and I want to take that step? The most logical step. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What do you do crowd, man? Then you got then accept Islam then. All sides put to it, isn't it? Makes sense. So you we're gonna discuss your thing, but you got you're yeah, both different people, yeah, innit? Yeah. So what did you think about what I said? Do you think you're there? Not yet. So you need to say and you need to ask yourself what's stopping you? And I'm gonna speak to him and see if that works for you as well, yeah? So for yourself. When you say evidence and when you say definitive, what do you classify as evidence? In my head it's fact, science in a sense. What do I believe, like how should I put it, all science was made by the creator. So think of I still need something to back it up. Like the way science can be backed up by the Quran, the same way the Quran can back up science. So when you say evidence mm. and you said evidence science, so what, what do you mean? What classifies as evidence to you? Like, something that you can put under a microscope and test it? In a sense, but it's a thing of, obviously the book says there's heaven and hell, right? But I've never spoken to someone who can tell me, oh, I died. And I we, we, we'll come to that, we'll come to that. But so, I, I want to first understand what you mean by evidence. I guess almost like, I don't know. It's just fact, if that makes sense. Yeah, nothing in science is fact. Karl Popper, I was reading a book of Karl Popper. Uh, even when you look at science, even scientists don't believe that the theories in science are fact. That's they, theories, that's theories. Theories are theories. No, 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 no. In science, theory means something different. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have something called the inference to the best explanation. There's nothing in fact in science. I'll, I'll give you an example. If I see uh, a swan, yeah, I see a white swan. I see one white swan, two white swan, three white swan. I go over there, I see white, 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 white swan. I go over there, white, 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 white. I go to Cambodia, white, 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 white. According to science, that's enough for me to now conclude and posit a theory that swans are white. That's called induction, yeah? That's the primary way that you seek. Uh, that, that's the primary form of evidence in science. The main and the most popular kind, yeah? Induction. But that can always be disproved by another observation. Yeah, it's called the problem of induction. That tomorrow an evidence can come that can supersede, disprove yeah, yeah dis disprove that. But this is the best that we have according to what we can see. So science relies upon, for example, testimony as well. Testimony means, uh, for example, trusting of the people of authority. 
Yeah, it's a rough translation. But in science, you can't prove testimony. You can't evidence it. Science accepts testimony. It just believes it. Yeah. When you talk about putting stuff under a microscope, dark matter and dark energy, you can't yeah, put under a microscope. Yeah, sure. Big Bang theory, you can't put under a microscope. Evolution theory, you can't put under a microscope. But there they tell us, oh, it's an accumulation of evidence. It's the fossil record. It's this, it's that. It's the you know, background radiation. But, but again, it's not something. I, I didn't see the Big Bang. Sure. But when it comes to God, no, I need to see God. You say, no, but we have the effects of the Big Bang. Yeah, but we have effects of God. Yeah, sure. Do you see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I wanted to understand when you're talking about evidence. Yeah. In science, they still say the inference to the best explanation. Yeah. No scientist can come here and say tomorrow, a purple elephant with one nostril won't be tap dancing here in the park. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. They say it could happen, maybe. The possibility can exist. So when you start living like that, bro, the absurdities occur. Do you see? So that's why I'm saying there's a, there's a delusion that they say, oh, anything that's proven by science. Bro, why is it one day they're telling you coffee is good for you, the next day they're telling you coffee is not good for you? Yeah, it's the advancements. So at one point, it's just what we know is fact now, but we may not know. And it else. constantly changes. Mm -hmm. One day they say, oh, this oil is good for you. The other day, it's not good for you. Mm -hmm. Alcohol, lunch. I think, yeah, Lancelot Journal says there's no benefit in it whatsoever. Another journal says oh, there's some benefit in it. Do you see? So it's constantly changing because science by its nature is constantly changing. If you were alive earlier on, you would believe in something called the steady state model. That universe didn't come from the Big Bang, it was there forever. That was the prevailing scientific theory. So science itself, bro, is not enough. Science doesn't tell you why. Science tells you how. And even science relies on human beings. Do you see? So that's why I'm forced to ask you, bro. When you say evidence, let me increase that. Instead of just relying on induction. Islam relies on induction. There's deduction. You know, like logical syllogisms. It relies on philosophy, relies on logic. All forms of evidence are evidence. You know what I mean? There's empirical evidence as well. Like I was talking about the manuscripts and the likes. So don't only take one form. Or oh, if I don't see it, that, oh, you don't see a lot of things. True. In fact, over 90% of things we can't see. True. Our thoughts, our dreams, our emotions, our intelligence, our intentions. You know what I mean? A lot of things, consciousness, we can't see them. Yet we believe in it. No, it's there, yes, you know what I mean? So there it's, on, it's a different criteria. Because one guy in a suit says, oh, I know this and I know that. But there's been things in the past that have occurred that have been false. Like one guy I was just reading today, there was one paleontologist yeah, called Othniel Charles Marsh. Yeah, He was so desperate, there was something called the Bone Wars, and he wanted to provide the evidence of the Brontosaurus. So what he did was he found the, the skeleton of the Apatosaurus, just the body, and he put the head of the Camarasaurus and he said, this is the Brontosaurus. But that's a fraud. That fossil is, is false, it's wrong. You know what I mean? So, but he fooled his, uh, his fellow colleagues. Yeah, and it was printed and everybody, even till today, you go to a child, you say, you know the Brontosaurus? Yeah, yeah, I know the Brontosaurus. But the origins of the fossil was incorrect. So the point that I'm trying to say is even when it comes to the peer review process as well, certain things that slip through the cracks. So again, it relies on human beings. I'm saying something that transcends human beings is God. For example, you, you're dependent, correct? Yeah. You're dependent on something else. That's dependent on something else. That's dependent on something else. Can't go on for infinity, can it? There has to be an end to that chain. Even philosophically, they say that's called the necessary being. You can't have an infinite regress. You depend on something, that depends on something, that depends. There has to be an end, otherwise it makes, it's illogical. You know what I mean? And then that initial, that necessary existence has to be independent, has to be wise, has to be powerful. That's, that's our definition of God. Other people are telling you tree is God, other people are saying, telling you this man is God, other people are saying grass is God, other ones saying you're God. Bro, if you really think you're God, 
Think about that thought when you're sitting on the toilet and you've got water coming out the backside. And you're making that face. Come on. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Let's, let's be realistic. Where God, sitting and diarrhea coming out, that's God. That's not God. You know what I mean? So bro, what I'm saying is evidence has its place when talking about empirical evidence. But also take testimony into account as well. Like today, if they're trying to tell you even your eyes can lie, deep fake technology is so good. Now we have to rely on testimony. We have to. Empirical evidence is not good enough anymore. Your, what your eyes are telling you is not enough. You know what I mean? You can't even trust your eyes. Holograms, so realistic. You can't trust your eyes. So people that are solely relying on empirical evidence, it's not good enough. You know what I mean? So when we bear this in mind, bro, and we know there has to be an end to that chain, so necessary being, which can be proved philosophically, empirically, logically, in terms of all of these things. And then when it, bro, you believe things in science with very less evidence. The bar is so low when it comes to God, the bar is set unrealistically high. Of course, the bar, the bar should be high, but, yeah, but unrealistically high. We believe that, oh, this, this can't come by chance. This microphone here can, can't come by chance, but yet there's a possibility you and I can come by chance. There's a possibility of an elephant with one nostril can come down and start tap dancing. There's a possibility, but God, oh, not God. You see, bro, so that's what I'm saying. And belief, it's, look, paradise and all of this, that's a subsequent question. When you believe in God, when you believe in the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when you believe in the Quran, that's the first step. And then other things follow afterwards. Yeah? If I accept that my mother is my mother, I've done a DNA test and this and that. Yeah? Then if she tells me, uh, then something else pertaining the mother is more believable because I've done this. So initially, if we've been given the evidence pertaining God, yeah? Empirical evidence testimony, deductive reasoning, inductive reasoning, then again Callum, Callum, yeah? Yeah, yeah? Then I say, what do you mean there's lack of evidence? I would say there's more evidence when it comes to God than say other things like string theory. Yeah, dark matter like I said earlier as well. Yeah. Dark matter. Big Bang Theory, evolution. Yeah, bro, even consciousness. Yeah. They, they don't know and I'm not I'm not I'm not appealing to God of the gaps What I'm saying is that science itself is not enough for a benchmark. It's not enough Science has to be there somehow. Someone has to create science. Science bro Won't teach you morals. Yeah. Einstein accepted this. We don't go to science for morals You can't put morals under a microscope You know what I mean? So we need a way of life and even when we look at all of these things, science doesn't dispute a creator. You know what I mean? Science just explains what's around us. I'll give you an example, bro. Yeah, if there's a car, if I don't know who created the car, and if I start finding out this is the piston, this is this, this is that, okay, I know how a car works. Does that mean that the creator of the car disappears? Just because we know how the universe is, Big Bang Theory, Evolution, no problem, no problem, no problem. Doesn't mean that that excludes a creator. Yeah, one is, uh, these are uh, like theories, yeah? These are laws that have been put in place. But God is the creator of laws. You can't have an infinite regress, bro. You depend on something that depends on something that depends on something. There has to be an end. So that this is one of the things, bro, modal logic, even logic, fundamental logic understands the existence of three kinds, nothing, contingent and necessary. You look at modal logic, you look at even the philosophers of the past, Aristotle, Leibniz, yeah, uh, Hume, all these guys. So the thing is, this is not disputed. In fact, what they said was, which God? That was the question. It wasn't Oh, is there a God or no? Or is there this or that? That was somewhat accepted by them. The question was, which God? And then that's where the discussions were. So again, I ask you, bro, bearing that in mind, what's stopping you? What's stopping me? 
I guess it's just me and my own, it's just me essentially, there's nothing else stopping me because I've got, it's like, how should I put it, all of my friends that are well versed in the, in the religion and stuff all tell me it makes no sense why I haven't made the step yet. But in my head it's just, I guess I feel like, I don't know, being incredibly honest, I feel like I'm too weak to snap out of the love of the dunya, the love of essentially sins, if that makes sense. So it's like, yeah, like how should I put it, I've spent my life sinning more than I have doing the righteous thing, if that makes sense. So do you do you think God and Islam is only for the strong people? Not necessarily, but like how should I put it? In my head I feel like I need more strength to do it, if that makes sense. You know what that thing in your head is? It's just doubt. It's a voice. Yeah. And I'm sure there's voices in your head sometimes when your friend's saying something, you're, what does that voice tell you? Slap him in the face. Yeah, trust Slap me. him right now, <laughs> on that right cheek. Leave a mark, <laughs> right now. But what do you say to that voice? I don't want to get arrested. Yeah, I would. <laughs> I don't want to get arrested. Yeah? So that's the thing, bro. There's some voices that you pay attention to. There are some voices that you don't pay attention to. Yeah. Islam is, Islam is not only for strong people. Islam is not only for the people that are guided. Islam is not only for the knowledgeable people. Islam is for everyone. Islam is a way of life, bro. It gives you the map. You don't ask even maps in stores, bro. They don't say only if you know how to do this and how to do it. No, anyone can buy the map. So it's the same with Islam, bro. What we say is you get the map, then afterwards, how you, for example, you can drive at 10 miles an hour, 5 miles an hour, 20 miles an hour. You can go on a bicycle, you can go on that scooter, you can go on the mobility scooter, you can go on the Zimmer frame. It's up journey, to you, bro. Journey. The journey is the journey. At least you're on the journey, bro. But at least, I'm saying at least start the journey. The journey started, for sure. But like, the, just... the journey, bro, I'll, I'll tell you what God says. This isn't about what you and me say. God says the journey starts when you say, I testify there's none worthy of worship besides Allah and I testify that Muhammad is a messenger of Allah. That's when your journey starts. Otherwise, bro, you haven't, you haven't even acknowledged that he's there. Sure. Bro, you have not even experienced what life is about. You, you, you're not even, you don't even have the attachment. Yes, God still overlooks you, but that attachment is not there, bro. Imagine your mom's there cooking and cleaning and this and that and loving you and showering you with love and affection and you don't even acknowledge she's there, bro. Yeah. That's mad. How is that not mad? How does that not blow your mind? Sure. With your own mom, what did they say? At least say thank you, bro. Bro, like, at, least, at least look at her, bro. <laughs> you know what I mean? At least say thanks, mom. Mm. No, no, I don't know. She's my mom. Thanks. <laughs> thanks, bro. <laughs> I think I should call I should call her bro. No bro. I call you bro. I'll call her bro. You know what I mean? So I say this bro and I and I say it with a heavy heart. Honestly. Bro, wallahi, there's no reason for you not to accept Islam. I, if there was, I would have taken a step back and I would have said, okay, bro, there's there's cameras here. You'd see the comments on the oh you're forcing him, you're telling him lie. Bro, all these cameras, you can verify everything that I've said. You can check it yourself. Read the Quran, do all of this, but bro, honestly, it's for both of your benefits. You're gonna, I'm telling you, the sleep that you get tonight, I'm telling you, accepting God, bro, it's the most fundamental thing of life and addressing God by His name. Oh Allah, it's one of the grand names of Allah, one of the, one of the great names of God. Addressing him by his name, bro. You know what Heisenberg says in Breaking Bad? Say, say my name. <laughs> say, say my name. Why? Because a name has value. It has respect. So you not God. No, oh, say his name. His name is Allah. Say his prophet's name. Prophet Muhammad. Peace be upon him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Say his book. It's the Quran. And then you will know what a woman is. Then you will know to respect your mom. Then you will know not to lie. Then you will know how to live your life, bro. You have purpose in life. You know what I mean? So when, I, when you say, I don't know, I say, you do know. I say, it's that voice in your head that's telling you, I don't know, I don't know. But when I speak to you, brother, you're honest. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. You give the response and you say, you know what? I do know. So I ask you guys again. What is it 
What is it? What is it? Again, it's that voice, isn't it? It's, it's me. It's my own That God. is preventing you from understanding the favors of your Lord. This is what God says. And Allah, I am Allah. Qul huwa Allahu ahad. Say he is God the one. We've come to the end of the line, lads. It's coming though. I know it's coming. We're For coming sure. to the end of the line. I'm telling you, bro, honestly, if I felt that there was a genuine reason, the brothers know. I'm, I'm a soft guy. Yeah? I will just go do my thing. But honestly, I don't believe that what's holding you back is genuine. I think you're just, I think you're Muslim. Mm. I think you just need to proclaim it. Mm, it's the mental barrier. It's, it's that. And we need to overcome that. Yeah, it's true. Something I'm working on though, for sure. Something I've been working on for a while. This is not like, how should I put it? This has been like, since like 2010. I almost took my Shahada 2011. And I just thought, I don't know. I just felt like I wasn't ready for it. And then like last year, I fasted, I fasted with my brother. Yeah, man, like a lot of my family's converted to Islam. Like. It's definitely there. Everyone, everyone around me already knows, but it's like a. It's, it's you know what it is, bro. My own. It's an unrealistic standard that you have in your head. That's yeah. why I wanted to ask when you were talking about evidence. Mm. That's why I was asking him, what do you mean by evidence? And do you apply the same thing to science? Uh, no, do you apply the same thing to the theories that we accept today, like the Big Bang theory? Mm. No one saw the Big Bang theory. Mm, it's true, you're right. No one saw the Big Bang theory. No one saw evolution take place. Oh look, that fish, whoa! Oh, it's, it's on land now, yo, it's a chimp now, yo! It's Dodgy Dave now. <laughs> yeah, 100%. You know what I mean? So, the point that I'm trying to say, bro, is what, what you're saying, it's not... It doesn't make sense. It doesn't, it's got no, it's got no substance behind it. It's like, like I said, it's that, it's that mental barrier. That makes sense. Is that yeah. sometimes it is. Yeah, essentially. I almost feel like, in a sense, it might sound crazy, but it sounds in my head. It's like I've already sinned too much to be forgiven. And I know that sounds crazy. That's a sign of That's a sign of Don't underestimate how much Allah loves you. Don't underestimate Allah's mercy. And if you reject His mercy, then you reject Him. There's a narration of the Prophet, peace be upon him, says that as long as man keeps sinning, even if the sins were to pile up to the heavens, as long as he asks for forgiveness, he'll be forgiven. But that's why I'm saying, bro, it comes back to the same thing. When you accept Islam, you know about this stuff. You're not going to know if you haven't started the journey. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying it's important, bro. You take the Shahada and I promise you, bro, I will personally spend time with you and if you want me to, then I can go through these things because I'm telling you, they're easy responses. You keep throwing them, I can keep telling you the Prophet has already answered these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not about the sins. As long as you are there to seek forgiveness and proper forgiveness, God is going to forgive you, bro. It's not like, oh, you committed a sin, like that's it. And it's not just any forgiveness. If you commit a sin in Islam and if God forgives you, that sin is removed such that it doesn't it didn't even exist. That's the way it is. Yeah? That's how the sin is it's removed. However, if you wrong him, but then you ask him for forgiveness, he may forgive you, but he's gonna remember that. It's gonna be etched in his unconscious mind. You know what I mean? That's how we are as human beings. God is not like that, bro. That's why I'm saying that if God has created us, mercy is the most merciful the most kind, the most just. And we see this, bro. The more you look into Islamic literature, and I want you to do it through the lens of a Muslim, bro. Mm. Not as somebody sitting on the fence. Yeah, it's true. That yeah. doesn't befit you, bro. Mm. You don't look like somebody that sits on the fence. Definitely. You look like somebody leaning on the fence. <laughs> but you're not sitting on the fence. Yeah, it's true. There's a difference. Mm. You see, that's because you've come off the fence. Yeah. And you're closer now. <laughs> you're closer. So bro, that's, that's why I say, so sins, that was, that was the thing. And bro, you need to make your own decision, my bro. If you feel you're ready, bro, you jump in and you say, bro, I'm ready. Because bro, when you're in the grave, he's not going to be in there with you. And you're not going to be in there with him. You're going to be there by yourself. And your times, your, your times are different. 
So you need to, and you guys have your own individual experiences. And you've got, you've been sitting in the car, you look out and you're like, wow, oh, this, this is actually amazing. This is phenomenal. Look at the way things are. Or you, you look at the sonar that bats have, the migratory instincts of birds, the blood pressure control system in the brain of a giraffe. Allah no, Akbar, only look at this stuff, bro. You look at snakes, bro. Not people, yeah. snakes. <laughs> the, the, <laughs> there's a lot of those as well. <laughs> They're the wrong kind of sign. But the actual snakes, bro, you look at snakes, you look at reptiles. At human beings, you look at spiders, you look at scorpions, then you look at the human being. The way the human being is able to control a lion. Bro, a human being can make a lion jump onto a ball. He can make a lion do tricks. An elephant, bro, three, four times its size. And the man's, he's got a little stick in his hand, he's smacking it. He's bullying the elephant. It's the power. But yet, you can't acknowledge God. You can't acknowledge the one that's given us these faculties of thinking. It, 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 wallahi, it's beyond me. It doesn't make sense. And you know what? It's beyond you as well. And the things, the, the, it doesn't make sense. What do you mean? I, I don't know. Tell me, bro. I want to understand. When you worship, when you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's very important you have a balance of health and fear. The scholars they mention is like, for example, you have a bird, you have two wings. If, if, if you are focusing too much on the right wing, it's going to be imbalanced. And if you focus too much on the left wing, it's going to be imbalanced as well. So you need the balance of health and fear. What's happening at the moment, you're being too guilty of yourself, too much fear, this is wrong. But having too much hope in Allah, means you're going to be complacent in your act. So you have to you have to strike that balance between hope and fear. And that is the objective. And that's what worship is. Worship means you're in a state of submission and obedience to Allah, making sure that you don't associate partners with Him, and you have hope, love and faith. And everything has to be balanced. So for the for the the people at home, the brother was saying that in Islam there's a balance between hope and fear. Too much of one thing is not good enough. Yeah? You've seen Karate Kid as well. Yeah, yeah. You know what Miyagi said? <laughs> Not even that, bro. <laughs> Not even that. I'm going to give you a different Miyagi line. Yeah. Balance <laughs> is key. Yeah, it's, it's key, bro. Balance is key. Mm. Too much of one thing, too much of the other thing is not good, bro. Yeah, and that's why balance the thoughts that are in your head. Of course, of course the devil doesn't want you to accept Islam. But you need to distinguish, bro. You need to be strong. You need to ask yourself, are those thoughts in my head genuine? Is what the brother saying opposite me and the other brother, is what they're saying wrong? Can I say they're categor categorically wrong? Definitely they're definitely not. Then you need to definitely accept Islam. Sure, I agree. But if you're concerned about your fasting, once you take your shahada, you're like a baby. Like yeah. a baby. Yeah, so everything is wiped out. Mm. Nothing is left. That's Newborn baby, bro. Start, yeah. it's a, bro, how many fresh starts do we get? The only time you'll get a fresh start is if you go to Mad Max, get one of those illegal passports. You know what I mean? Just a bit of, you know, just change your face a little bit, grow a little something, put certain shades on, have a little scar. Go to Mexico, bro. You'll be fine there. But bro, we don't get fresh starts here. Sure. Especially, especially even as men, bro. Mm -hmm. As men, our standards are higher. It's more difficult for us. So we need something sturdy. We need something to lean on. We need something to assist us. And I'm telling you, bro, it's not, it's not these movements that are out there. Gym is not going to kick it. Gym is not enough. Having a healthy diet is not enough. Yeah, the only thing that's going to be enough for you, bro, is having that connection with God. <coughs> the sooner you get it, the sooner you can live life, bro. That's what I'm saying. We had, and a, what... shahada, we had a shahada yesterday. And, um, you know, he's a Roman Catholic. He just came to say, I'm just looking for peace. And you can see from his face that he's really depressed. Mm. The moment that the brothers conveyed the message of Islam, mm. even before he took the shahada, he just started to cry. Mm. Emotion. He said, finally, I found peace. And then he took the shahada from you. Yeah, you're never gonna find that peace if you don't. So, bro, that's the thing. Um, you already believe in Islam. It's already in your head. But the thing in the thing is in Islam, there's credibility. Credibility is only given to something if it's verbalized. Yeah. So you can think you're a Muslim, and that's good. 
that's progress. But it's only accepted in the sight of God when you verbalize it. It's not going to cost anything. You don't have to sign a contract. You just have to repeat the two things that I said. I testified there's none worthy of worship besides God. Now I testify that Muhammad is a messenger of God. That's literally it, bro. Once you do that, the door becomes open for you. Yeah, and then you can start doing other things. It doesn't mean that you have to sign a contract. You have to wear certain clothing. You have to do certain things. It just means you're now on a journey. And slowly, slowly, you progress. You're going to keep your Islam private. You're going to do it secretly. No problem. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, that's, that's up to you. But what I'm trying to say is, you already believe. It's like in your head, you like pasta. You really like pasta. I love pasta. It's fantastic. This and that. You saying I love pasta has made no difference to your life. You know what I mean? Because you still love pasta. But when you verbalize to somebody, I love pasta, you might get pasta. Yeah, sure. You know what I mean? So if you verbalize to God, you exist. I accept you and I accept your prophet. Then you get what comes with that, which is your sins get forgiven. You move on with your life, bro. You start living. Living, yeah, I've got to say the same thing, yeah, it's true. You start living, bro. Because mm. in the Quran it says the difference, and I'm paraphrasing, difference between someone who remembers God, someone who doesn't, but they're living over the dead. Mm. So, bro, we have loads of corpses walking around. That's literally what it is, bro. People are saying, where, where are the men? Where are the people? The corpses, bro. How are you going to be making change when the change isn't coming from you first? That's true, you have to be the change you want to see. And when you know, bro, that the barometer and morality and stuff like this comes from Islam, my question is, again, comes back to the point. What and why is, the de is there the delay? There's almost none in it. It's just, yeah, again, it's the same, it's the same, almost the same answer, isn't it? It's just myself. It's, you call it jinns, you call it the dunya, you call it all sorts, but... Do you want to fight these gents? Yeah, I've been trying to, yeah, of course. I've been trying to do it my own way. I'm gonna. It's almost impossible. I can, I can help you fight this gin. Yeah. This gin is afraid of me. Mm. Yeah? You know why? Because I'm going to give you the remedy of the Prophet, peace be upon him. I'm going to give you the remedy of Allah, who's created this gin. Are you ready to remedy it? Not necessarily right now. If it's the Shahada, not right now. That's what I'm, I'm saying. just saying remedy. Do yeah, you want ahead. the remedy? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. The remedy is the Shahada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be real with you, bro. Of course, of Islam course, is real. Of course, of course. You know what I mean? Yeah. Islam is real and it's mm. for the real. That makes sense. That's the remedy. And the only way you can break the deadlock that they have over you, you say the Shahada right now, the deadlock is broken. And I'll walk you through it. It's something I'm definitely interested about. It's, it's something I definitely want to do, isn't it? So it's definitely a thing of we exchange contact information. I can still ping over the same questions. Let's do it because this is the year that I said I would. <laughs> so maybe not here right now, right today. But if I'm honest, I'd be lying if I didn't say what you said today hasn't opened my eyes more and pushed me further towards taking my shahada for sure. Just because, yeah, there's a whole load of that goes into it. Like the sex, like you said earlier, like, the Hadiths, X, Y, Z, there's a whole bunch of questions I already do have. Mm, but yeah. Even he knows I'm already 60% the way there. I just haven't make, made the final step myself. Actually, more than 60%. Yeah. You mentioned earlier about your family members. Yeah. As well. Have you consulted them? How, how are they now? Like, are they happier? Or? I've just been able to see it, if I'm honest. I've been able to see it from, from my eyes that they're definitely happy. So you've got, they're, you've they're got they're evidence. Different lives. That's, that's they're the living evidence. different lives, for sure. That's the evidence. I've just told myself for the longest time that almost that. I'd say it's like a thing of, yeah, like, I'm not worthy in a sense. Not, not you've that. told yourself. Yeah. The shaitan. Yeah, it's true. The jinns, the shaitan, yeah. they've told you that. Yeah. I think you're stronger, bro. I think you're stronger. Inshallah. <laughs> I think you're stronger, bro. I think you're stronger, bro. Definitely. What about, what about Tim? And you believe uh, Allah writes everybody's path, right? Say that again. Allah writes everybody's path. Oh. Puff, Puff. Sorry, yes, sorry. yes. So we write mine as well. So it will be, it will be happening one day. He knows it. Not then, right here, right now. Tim, it was a wonderful conversation with both of you guys, and it's Thank good. You as well, yeah. No, no, my pleasure, bro. Like I said, I'm not here to force anybody. 
I, I saw it in you guys. Personally, if you if you took your shahada, even if I go there and I come back and I hear they've taken shahada with someone else, mm. alhamdulillah, mm. I'll be happy. Personally, I think you guys are ready. Yeah. Mm. yeah? I have a strong feeling that it's going to be today as well. Never know. That's, that's, that's a feeling that I have. Yeah? Inshallah, God willing. Yeah? But what I'm saying is, you have to be true to yourself. It's true. Yeah, that, that's all I'm saying. And you guys are sincere. And inshallah, we meet again. We will, for sure. Yeah? Yes, Callum, thank you so much. It's my pleasure, brother. Yes, yes. Tim, my pleasure. Thank you so much. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, mashallah. I mean, these are the sorts of conversations that we, we, we love to have at Speakers Corner. Brothers and sisters that are, that are genuine, they're honest. Like they, they had questions, they had issues. And when they were responded to, they were honest and they said, yeah, you know what, it's, uh, that, that makes sense. You know, maybe I do need to give this more thought and this and that. And they give a very good example that it's not easy to take your shahada. And shaitan won't always allow you to take your shahada. Even if you may be close to Islam and very there like Abu Talib, the Prophet's uncle. Yeah, sometimes certain people is not meant for them. Sometimes it is meant for them. We don't know, but we carry on trying. Abu Talib, the Prophet carried on trying till the end. He didn't accept Islam, but he was an asset for Islam and he continued till the end. And that's our job as well, inshallah. May Allah accept. Amen.